In the next couple of videos, I'm going to start introducing how to do animation purely in ActionScript and how you don't need to really use the timeline anymore when you actually start using the timer event and other aspects of ActionScript to create your animations. The first thing I want to do, though, is before we get into that, is to go over some of the basics about animation that are important when you want to start doing animation in ActionScript. So I'm going to review a timeline animation and extract different pieces of this that are important for you when you start working with animating with ActionScript. So in this particular example, I have a simple graphical object that I have on a linear, uh, a linear animation here. And if I run the animation, you'll see it goes from point A to point B. Pretty basic. You know, we've, we've done all these before. But something I want to, I want to uh, just kind of go into some details about is if I if you think about this, when I'm going in flash using the tweening methods that we have in the, in the timeline, when I go from point A to point B, flash is actually filling in for us automatically what happens with that with this red dot with each frame that it, it actually plays. In fact, when you actually look at the uh, when you actually look at the motion path in flash, there are these little tiny green dots that represent where it is where it is going to rest on each individual frame. So if I take a look at, uh, if, I if I select my object here, you'll see that on frame 1, it's at a coordinate 15 by 15. If I go to the bottom frame here, you'll see that it is at uh, position 300 by 150. Flash is then inserting inside each one of these frames where it exists on each one. So in this case, on frame 9, it's at 268 uh, by 135. What we need to do in ActionScript is actually represent per frame how that actual object is going to move. If you remember in geometry, there was a property for a line called a slope. And the slope represented how much, uh, how much an object was going to change on the x-axis and the y-axis. And it was usually represented as a fraction. In this case, Flash is determining what that slope is automatically and is applying the change in the x-coordinate and the change in the y-coordinate for us automatically when we actually use the tweening method. When we do this in ActionScript, we actually have to do this ourselves. So the basic principles of slope, rise over run, or change of x over change of y, is what we'll need to use when we actually start doing this in ActionScript ourselves. The other thing that's important is to represent things in frames. In this case, when I use, action, when I use the, the timeline and I use tweening methods, frame rates are determined by the actual Flash project. In this case, uh, the, default framework, uh, the, the default frame rate in Flash CS4 is 24 frames per second. So in this case, I have an animation that is 10 frames. So it's going to last the proportionate amount of 24 frames per second for 10 frames, which is about 2.4, I think. Anyway, so when we actually start working with this object in ActionScript, we need to use the timer method. And if you remember, timer method is based on actual time. It's not based on frame rate. So we need to actually control how often we want this to happen based on, based on milliseconds, which is the basic uh, property of the timer. So in the next video, we're actually going to go into ActionScript and show you how to create a basic linear animation using just ActionScript. Then we'll start introducing random elements to change the actual motion of the animation and the starting location using the random number generator that we covered before.